critical path with constraints. So what we're going to do here in this situation, in this uh, simple network, is we're going to apply a constraint here to start activity H on day 24. Okay, so here's our current critical path A, B, E, G, G, J. Let's see what happens after we apply a constraint here. Okay, and it's a simple soft constraint. Okay, so here's what happened. We pushed activity H into the future, which then altered the critical path. So by pushing H into the future with that start on or after constraint, it started, um, essentially what it did is it caused H to now drive J's dates. And it completely altered the critical path, as you can see. Okay. So we'll go back one, one slide again. So you can see G is driving J to start on the 26th and finish on the 27th. But now we force H far into the future, H is now driving J. Okay, so the critical, what, what you might see in the scheduling software, I'm going to say might because sometimes I don't know exactly, <laughs> and, and mysterious things have been known to come up, um, but what you should see is that there is a critical path from H to J. And actually these activities, A, B, E, no longer are critical. Um, that's why I made them dotted. They wouldn't be critical because they would have total float now. They would have uh, available total float. Okay, so that's one of the challenges of working with of, uh, of constraints. You need to be aware how it can edit your and change your critical path. Now let's look at, um, oh, there we go. I have the total float values up there on the screen now. Okay, so 0, 0 for H and J. And A, B, and E have positive three days. Okay, we'll do one more example, second example, okay? In this case, we're, we're applying a start on or before constraint day 10 to activity F. So activity F currently starts on day nine, and we're going to push it one day into the future. And just notice it has 10 days of total flow, okay? And the result there, as you can see, is not much happened. So in the second example where we are using the constraint to move an activity within its available total float, um, this is the proper way to use constraints. We want to avoid using constraints to alter critical path. Quick note here from Laura. Can I use a hard constraint on a contract finished milestone to analyze my schedule risks and mitigate those logic issues by modifying activity duration or your resource usage? Absolutely. If you want to use hard constraints Strictly for analysis, um, then absolutely, I, I have no problem with that, although you don't want to leave them on your schedule uh, permanently. Now, in this situation, notice that before I had 10 days of total float and I applied a constraint to day 10, and what happened to my total float? My total float went down to one day. So, th so again, I'm just going to step back, okay? So this activity is already starting on day 9. I'm saying start on day 10, okay? But I'm also saying don't just start on day 10, start earlier. Start on or before day 10. So in this case, that start on or before, um, this type of constraint is applied to the, look at the bottom dates down here, it's applied to the late date. So um, day 10 is put down here in the late dates. So now I just have one day of float um, because it is a start on or before, uh, meaning that the latest it can start now is day 10. And as a result, it affects total float. Okay, third example. Mandatory start, day 7. Okay, so this activity is currently starting on day 9, has 10 days of float. And I'm saying mandatory to start this activity on day seven, hard constraint. Let's see what happens. Okay. It, we've broken this relationship as a result of applying that constraint, um, whereas 
day nine here, the finish of C was driving the start of F, but no longer. In fact, these two activities are now overlapping. And there is no total float uh, for this activity. Total float has gone to zero. So this activity would show up, even though it's not in the path of the critical path, but it would show up as a critical activity. Okay, so as you can see, all sorts of strange things can happen. So if you've got a lot of these constraints and you're applying them throughout your schedule, um, and then you go to do critical path analysis, you can see that it would be difficult to figure out exactly uh, what's going on. Okay, this is what we we're calling a little quiz. Here's a situation where I just have a bunch of activities in line with each other, and only the first three activities are critical, but D, E, F are not. What's going on? Well, it's because a finite constraint has been applied to C. Um, well, let's back up here, actually. These activities all had um, some positive total float. Okay, So there's positive float here on D, E, F, but once we applied the finish constraint to C, then uh, we created probably some negative total float. Now, I thought we'd actually do this example in P6 just to show you. So here we are in P6 with a line of simple activities. Okay, and if you look at total float column here, we have one day of total float on this path of activities. Okay, so one day. And what we've done here is we've come to and we've said finish on or before, and we've set the date earlier than where, when it's currently finishing. So it's currently finishing on the 17th, and I'll probably bring it back a few days like this. Essentially creating negative total float in activity C and its predecessors. Okay, so using a finish on or before constraint here applies, um, creates negative total float for that activity. So, so when you think about it, this is almost like setting a deadline, right? So we're saying activity C, you have to finish on this date. That's your drop dead date. That's your deadline, 14. And the logic though, you know, says there's no way I can finish on the 14th. I've, I'm finishing on the 17th. Okay, there's no way to finish on the 14th. So this creates negative total float, and that negative total float is almost like an indicator of how close you are, of how close or far you are from hitting that deadline in the project. So if you think of the 14th as a deadline, then I need three days in on this path of ABC. I need to find three days in order to finish on the 17th. I said the 17th, but I actually meant the 14th. I need to find three days to finish on the 14th. So the finish on constraints can be used to set soft, uh, I don't want to call them soft, but I want to call them intermediary deadlines within your schedule. Okay, so you can set a deadline within a path on your schedule. So that's how the start constraints can be used. Okay, one more quick quiz here. We have a path A, B, F, I, L, and finish milestone. And what we're applying here is a constraint that says finish this activity on day 12. And as you can see, yeah, I think my animations are a little mucked up on this one. Um, but by applying a, a finish on constraint, okay, st strictly finish on day 12, that makes the start dates, the early dates match the late dates, okay? And it makes, makes them uh, 12 as well. So then this now becomes a path with zero total float. So I'm rounding the corner with this to see if I can help you figure out which one, which constraints to use and when. And I've always found that there's no easy way to explain 
there's, I've never had anybody explain this in a simplified way to me. Which star constraint should I use? So let me see if this gr these graphics sort of um, simplify these concepts. Okay. So within a star constraint, we have the three different flavors. We have start on, start on or after in the middle, then start on or before. Okay. So which one do we use? Now, it's really common for... Actually, let me back up and, and read you this sentence up here. So, start constraints push a start date later than it already is. Okay? That's all they do. Your start date is day 11. I can't actually, um, because this is a soft constraint, I can't start earlier than day 11. It just won't work, right? I've got logic that's tying me to my start date. We always, we always use our early dates. So start dates really are, are used mostly for pushing date starts of activities later, okay? You can't set a start date earlier than it already is. You just can't. Okay, so I'm, try, I'm basically going to push my start date into the future, make it later. And I can do that in one of three different ways. The first way is to just say start on a very specific date, okay? So... What I'm trying to describe here in the blue, um, this blue box sort of represents the original activity, okay? The, the, the bar of the original activity. And now I'm saying the, the orange bar is the new start of that same activity, okay? So with a start on constraint, you're basically limited to pushing that start date into the future and specifically to a specific date. Now with a start on or after, you're essentially setting it to a date, but you're also giving yourself permission to have a, an extended date range. So if logic shifts, so let's say this is uh, day 12 here, okay, start on or after day 12, and something happens in my schedule where the logic pushes things past day 12, well, that's okay. I'm still, that constraint still works, okay? So a lot of times we use this one, start on or after, because we like to have that date range available to us, okay? Start, late, start on this date or later. And in the real world, those are usually the kind of situations we have, right? Hey, you can start. Um, you can start installing the Windows on this date because that's when the materials are going to arrive. And you could start them after as well if you're a little bit delayed. That would be fine. Okay. Um, so the most common one to use here is the middle one: start on or after. Now, start on or before. Basically, you're going to set a date range. And you can say, you're saying, I can start this activity anywhere before that, but not later. Okay? So, it's a little bit strange. But in this case, if I apply a start on or before, and I'm trying to push something into the future, a lot of the times I'm actually not going to push it into the future with this constraint. Because I'm already starting it before. I've already met the constraint. Okay? So, this one is more used to... Um, to adjust total float, okay? So you can use these to adjust total float as well. Okay, hopefully that clears that. This paints a bit of a picture for you. Let's look at the finish constraints. The same way star constraints pull an activity into the future by their start date, finish constraints do the same thing. They pull an activity into the future, but by the finish date, okay? So you can't ever do it in the reverse direction. You can't set a finish date earlier. I mean, you can, but it's not going to work, is what I'm saying. So once again, we have finish on, finish on or after, finish on or before. And finish on, again, picks a very specific date and says, uh, finish this activity on this date. So again, the blue box represents the original activity. Um, you could imagine this activity being moved to finish on this orange bar, okay? 
So that's the new finish date for the activity and the start date would be pulled into the future as well. Now finish on or after, again, leaves me open to having a date range in case my logic is pushing things later. So finish on or after says, you know, finish this activity on this date or any time anytime after that is fine with me as well. So in the real world, we often don't use this one at all because we don't actually usually have constraints that, um, that work in this sort of logic. You don't ever have a deadline that says finish on this date or any time later, whatever, that's fine. You know, usually doesn't work that way. It's finish on this date or earlier. And so that's why we don't typically use um, the middle guy here, but we do use the finish on or before a lot. So this one again says finish this activity on this date or any time earlier is great. Okay, any time earlier is just fine.